Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Yes, thanks for joining us. Now today we're at Portland, with the southernmost tip of Dorset. You can probably hear the waves crashing against the rocks in the background. It's uh, located about 16 miles south of Dorchester and 9 miles south of Weymouth. And we're going to be doing a roughly three and a half mile circular route around the southern end as it were. Very much a coastal walk with lots, and I mean lots, of interesting things to see and explore. Well I've parked my car at uh, a car park at uh, Portland Bill. Uh, I'll put a photograph up on screen showing you the various charges. Now I'm filming right at the end of March. It is a beautiful sunny spring day. Um, there's a bit of a haze about but uh, the temperature is spot on, a little bit of a wind. A perfect day for a walk along the coast so do come along with us. Well we've already had a little wander down to the, uh, to the rocks. Uh, Logan was on a lead, I was making sure he didn't get washed away. It was quite spectacular. So let me tell you a little bit about Portland. The actual bill itself is a, a narrow promontory at the southern end of the Isle of Portland which itself is a peninsula linked to the mainland by a strip of shingle known as Chesil Beach. Now we're just below a massive great big lighthouse and uh, there's quite a bit of history uh, to Portland with uh, regard to lighthouses. From Roman times fires were lit here to warn ships of the dangers of the bill and in 1716 two lighthouses were built, uh, one higher and one lower. We'll see them in more detail later. In 1789 the lower one was demolished and both lighthouses were rebuilt in 1869. Now in 1905-1906 this new lighthouse was built and the two original ones sold. One became a bird observatory in 1961 and one became a holiday let. The one in front of me is uh, 136 foot high. It became unmanned in 1996 and uh, had LED technology installed in 2019. Now this very impressive obelisk was erected here in 1844 by Trinity House. Uh, erected as a, a stone obelisk, very much as a day mark. It's seven metres high and made of Portland stone. The TH uh, refer refers to um, Trinity House. Of course there are dangerous waters out here due to the shallow reefs and ledges and the, the Portland race, which is a tidal race caused by the clashing of tides. Well, just in front of me here is Pulpit Rock. It's basically a stack of rock formed in uh, the 1870s by quarrying operations after a, a natural arch was cut away by quarrymen. It's supposed to represent an open Bible leaning on a pulpit. I'll tell you what, there's some quite stunning views along this coastline. But I'm keeping Logan back on a lead now because we're perilously close to the edge. On a day like today, with the sunshine out, there's a real glorious blue colour to the sea. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that the wind isn't going to be too bad for the audio. It's perfect for me because it's keeping me nice and cool because there is actually quite a bit of warmth in that sunshine. But just look at this view. I, mean, I know I keep on saying that uh, views don't always come across that well on a, a GoPro camera but hopefully this gives you uh, a feeling or an indication of what I'm experiencing today. Really is quite glorious and there's um, pulpit rock over on the left. Uh, 
A lovely day to be out for a ride. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to start heading in a sort of northerly direction, keeping to the uh, south coast uh, path. Just behind me here, there's a an Ministry of Defence establishment. It's, I think it's a some sort of magnetic range uh, used for magnetic measurement. Uh, tests can be made well away from uh, stray electric and magnetic fields. Portland stone is non-magnetic. I think they also calibrate compasses and work is done here on mine countermeasures. <laughs> We're continuing along the southwest coast path. That's this uh, 630 mile long distance path from uh, well, Minehead round to Pool. We, we are right on the cliff edge here. But uh, I'll keep going on how blue the sea is today and lovely and calm, even though there is a bit of a wind. Well, I just made our way up a little uphill bit and this is the uh, the Coast Guard Lookout, it's, uh, well there's been a lookout here since 1934 but it closed in the 1990s and is now operated by the National Coast Watch Institution which rebuilt the station fairly recently I believe. And there's a, a good view of um, one of the older lighthouses, the higher lighthouse that's now a, a holiday let. We're actually now on the Hardy Way, which is a, a 220 mile uh, long distance route from uh, higher Bockhampton, which is where Hardy was born, to Stinsford Churchyard, where his heart is buried. And Thomas Hardy described uh, Portland as the Isle of Slingers, <laughs> as uh, inhospitable Portlanders used to throw stones to keep strangers away. This is where we say goodbye to the uh, western side of the uh, Portland Bill and head over to the eastern side. But from here we can get some great views of Chesil Beach on the far side. <laughs> made our way over to the eastern side of the bill. Uh, we crossed through the Sweet Hill Farm uh, campsite and saw some uh, the uh, ancient strip field systems that dated way back to Saxon times and um, crossed a, a road, the sort of proper road to Portland Bill that I believe was only uh, tarmacadamed as recently as 1922. So on the eastern side we're going to see a lot of evidence of uh, quarrying and uh, well just uh, by me here um, you know, pretty impressive uh, hole in the ground already I think we're going to see a lot more well it's certainly a superb place to explore through these uh, quarries of course the quarry industry was very much the uh, the chief industry in these parts in the 19th and 20th centuries in particular and of course a lot of stone from here was used to build um, St Paul's Cathedral. And I was uh, reading that um, some early maps of the area around here have uh, Portland Bill named as the Beal, uh, very much after its beak shape. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a, a flavour of the, the landscape here. It has a sort of a very magical sort of mystical feel about it and of course when you head over to the to the edge of the cliff 
again the sea looking quite resplendent today there we go the waves crashing down below this beautiful sort of turquoisey blue color absolutely gorgeous structure here, a wooden crane that would have been used for uh, loading stone basically onto uh, perhaps uh, boats below. Very much now standing as a, a memory of uh, the industry of the past. Now <laughs> we've got to be very very careful here Logan. Down there is the cave hole and there's a local tale that the cave is home to Roy Dog, a black dog as high as a man with large fiery eyes, one green and one black. And it's said that the creature emerges from the watery depths to seize any traveller passing by the cave hole and drags them down to his dark watery domain. Well, what do you reckon, Logan? I think we better move on pretty sharpish, don't you? just looking out to sea there is the Shambles Bank, a, a sand bank that lies three miles offshore and in the past a series of light ships were placed there between 1859 and 1976. Well we're very much on the homeward leg now. Uh, up there on my right there's a Coast Guard cottages built in 1898-1890 Nine, and then uh, well an additional four cottages were built in 1922 and then when the station ceased uh, to be used in the mid 20th century further houses were built I think 1985 four more were built and then uh, there's the pulpit in originally named the Devonish Arms built in 1953 54 and opened in 1955 it had long been the ambition of major jhc devonish to build a hotel or pub here even before the second world war but he died in 1954 just before it could be opened and it was named in his memory <laughs> until they changed it well our final bit of crane footage of the day and this one's called the red crane Again, part of the disused uh, stone loading system would have been a, a wooden crane originally. Um, and then when quarrying ceased, like uh, the others, I expect it was used to lower fishermen uh, into their boats. The crane uh, was later replaced with a metal one. Your bread? Yeah, oh. he's six years old. Oh, okay. Called Logan. <laughs> Logan, oh, that's nice. And what's yours called? Agat. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> You've met a friend on your yeah. walk. <laughs> but she, she is a lurcher, but she's yeah. really whippet, yeah. Oh. They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. They like, as I say, to see other sight hounds, don't yes, they? Yes, they do, don't they? They seem to recognise. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> They'd probably love to have a run. Yes. It's a bit risky, Best, isn't it? <laughs> Enjoy your walk. All right. Well, we're nearly at our final destination, but uh, this little interesting gully here. Now if you look at a, an 1897 map there was a, an old tramway that came along here from the, the quarry to the quay and I wonder if this 
could be the remains of it. Certainly it's where it, uh, it should be on the map. Well folks, we've come to our final destination, the uh, Lobster Pot, which I believe is one of the top 25 uh, seaside cafes in the UK. It's been established since the 1950s uh, and uh, reopened in the 1990s after a fire. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And uh, do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. Um, now don't worry, I've got a sausage just for him. <laughs> Here we go. That should keep him busy. And I've got some chips. Oh, and a nice pint of Doom Bar. So until we meet again, Thanks for watching and cheerio.